provide you with also false capitals. A man that is a stress, they're already in our mouth. Acts on details. Now they realize that also play an part. And saliva also play an important part. What do I mean by time? The two of
the competitors we have in the investable and the The initial one, when the Anything that is sweet, 
within a matter of minutes, one, three minutes, acid is formed and it drops the pH of your oral cavity significantly to a critical level whereby now calcium begins to leach out from the tooth. Within, within three the pH will drop. So the natural sugars, refined sugars, fructose and all those things, once you eat them, they drop the pH within within few minutes. And this is what I thought about potato chip, popcorn and all those things. Like they can yes. they, they always retain in your teeth for a longer time. And that can lead to yeah. Now I talk about the a susceptible to. Some people have deep cutters in their in their teeth. And that is prone to carrying a lot of suffering. And that can lead to development of cavities. And from this point, I realized that these teeth are more susceptible than the others. So the lower first molar is more susceptible to developing caries than all others. Why? Because usually they are the ones who appear first in the mouth, the adult teeth. And it occurs at the age of six, whereby these children have all the sweet, they want to eat everything when they go to school. So that tooth is usually susceptible to cavities. Then it counterpart in the upper. They all appear at the same time at age six. And you follow in that order. So this is what I meant by deep fishes, okay? Deep fishes we need the the thing. So sugary food, toffee can take in this gutters for a longer time. And that leads to the cavitation. Now we have what we call fissure sealer, a form of filling that will block all these holes. We'll talk about it in the next lecture, preventing dentistry. So this is what we we'll do so that we don't develop cavities. So we advocate for children to have fissure sealer done. Okay. Already, the longer it stays, the higher chance of getting cavities. Once again, the time. Like I said, within 30 minutes, three minutes, get the pH just drop, and the process of demineralization starts. As soon as you wash your mouth or you brush, then the process will break because the pH will begin to rise. And now, calcium will then go back and force it will go back into the teeth to remineralize it. So, when it's a balance, when the balance does not favor the, the remineralization, then you rather lose the calcium and the phosphate from the teeth, and eventually you need to carry its formation. Now, we talk about people who snack in between their meals, eating all these carbohydrate diet, snacks, coffees, and all those between meals. They also have high chances of developing cavity. And one man by name Stephens proved it with this graph. You realize that as soon as they had a glucose rent, within some few minutes, the pH drop below that critical level. Okay, then it begins to rise. But what happens is those, they divided the mouth into two. One side, initially uh, the, the, the person will take the, the sugary food, the whole mouth, the pH will drop. One side was left without brushing. One side was left by brushing. They realized that the side that was brushed, the pH stayed a bit higher. But the side that was not brushed, the pH a bit low again when they they, they they took a second rinse of the sugar on the side that was not bring, uh, was not bright it brought the sugar the pH further down so all it say is that in between time in between meals if you keep on eating sweet it also leads to you forming cavities so this is what this graph is just trying to explain once again the same thing I've talked about time 
breathing through remuneration, demineralization. If you keep the sugar longer on your teeth, you might end up having cavities. So we shall have talked about all this. Now the saliva, which I said, some people don't have a lot of flow because of certain conditions. Sometimes the flow is also a bit difficult, and that cannot clean the teeth well. So the saliva flow also plays a very important role in the formation of cavities. So its viscosity, its flow, composition, as well as its buffering action, it's all can lead to development of cavities or cavities. So this is just a summary of whatever we say. A microorganism of cavity that plant in our teeth. The vector will act on the carbohydrate that leading to the formation of an acid, lactic acid or acetic acid, which then start the process of demineralization. And eventually it appears as what we call a white spot on the teeth. A white spot on the teeth. That's how initially it started. So you may see something like this. Because the calcium and the phosphate ions have leached out of this part of the teeth. And that has changed the refractory nature of the, of the, of the food substance at that area. So it appears as a fine spot. If nothing is done at this stage, eventually it might lead to cavitation. So the same thing we talk about substrate leading to acid formation, then either cavitation or remineralization. So we have this balance. You know what you can see. Acid producing bacteria, saliva type of function. And the frequency of eating those sugars will tip you to develop the pigments. But if you have a, a high flow of saliva, you have a good component calcium and phosphate in them, you use dry toothpaste, then there's a low tendency of developing pigments. But this is the understanding of all that we've been talking about. Now people have also tried to classify pills based on the location. So you can have a pig and fissure pills. You can have a smooth surface pills or root pills. It's just by the location. Root pills means it's gone below to the root level. And usually it happens when the gum recedes. You have people who have gingival recession. And the root can be exposed and you can have root pills. Again, you can classify it based on where it is formed in terms of the, the two structure. It can be within the enamel, within the dentine, or within the cementum. The cementum is where right, that, that portion that covers the, the root. Okay. Now you can also classify it based on, on, on the virginity of the lesion. What do you mean by that? Is it the first time this cavity is forming? Or the cavity has formed, you fill it, and it has formed under the filling. So it can be a primary cavity or secondary cavity. Again, by progression, a progressive cavity or a rested cavity, you can have some cavity that, or cavity that can stay in that state for a very long time. It doesn't progress into the pore. So that means that cavity has become arrested. Maybe you have changed your, your habits, so now you are having a lot of remineralization and the case can stay there. Again, we can have other definitions like rampant, progressive case or rampant case, usually in children, we realize that all their anterior teeth are gone. And we can have a residual caries or case. Usually when you are doing the filling, you are able to remove all the caries. Something is left there, you do your filling, then you have a nice filling, yet the cavity will be developing under it. Now, this is what we use most of the time. This is the JV blood, one of those pioneers in dentistry. Classify caries as a class one, class two, class three, class four, class five, and class six. 
the class one is just the pit and fisher cables. All those cables within the pit on the top of the queue. Okay. The class two is in between the interprosmal cables. So the diagram will give you the data. So I think this 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 can explain it better. Okay. So this is a class one cavity on top of the pit or a pit. If you look inside a local meal of, of, of an incisor to be they have usually you have a pit here and cavity can develop there. So pit and fishes. Fishes is what I showed you where we seal with the cylinder. Okay, so this is a class one. Now class two is on the side of the tube. These are the posterior teeth. Okay, that's a class two. And that's a class three. Anterior teeth on the side. Class four is on the tip of an anterior teeth. Class five is between the root and the enema. Okay. It can happen in both anterior teeth and the posterior teeth. And the class six is at the tip of a molar teeth or a posterior teeth. So basically that is how GB blank classified periods. Again, the white spot I'm talking about. I wonder I should go into detail with this enema caries and all this. So enema caries, caries within the enema. We've talked about it already. The caries within the enema. Okay, and usually you can take some radiographs to help you identify. If you are not sure, you take a radiograph. If these radiographs are so important in dentistry, you must know. Create the and the cruiser instruments. We request them to help us identify the case. OPG or autopathomograph, another important instrument that will help us to see all the things in one go. Other ones are PAO and lateral views. But OPG is also so important. If you don't have an OPG in your district, then a bilateral oblique lateral will help you also to show all the you Take one, take another one, it will help you show all the So this is an OPG showing us all the An area of radiolucency will show you that there is a bit of caries development. This is X-ray. Somewhere like that. Okay, so an area of radiolucency on the tube usually is supposed to be white like this. If there is a darker area, then there is a cavity or caries developing there. Okay, this is a periodic And this has a nice feeling on it, but a secondary caries has developed which has eventually gone into the pore and has developed an apical abscess. If nothing is done, it may lead to what we call radio which we'll talk about later. Again, that's the way the appearance progress. Initially from the surface, the body of the lesion, you have the dark zone, the translucent zone. If you cut the cross section of the pit, this is what you will see. Yes. Periodica, the extreme, they put it inside the mouth and they did. That's it. If you can, yeah, it shows the whole, it shows the tube in, in detail. Okay, so it shows the tube, the, the, the periodical of all, all the, 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 the tube you want to investigate. So it's just a smaller version of this. This one will show you all the things. Sometimes you, you cannot get certain details clearly. So this one will help you to get certain details. Okay. So that's the name. That's the name of that. that. The name of it. It's called Kerebika. So then we again have a dentina period. The period that has developed inside the dentin. I showed you earlier on. You have the edema dentin in there. And the cement. So these are fine, fine details.
Then we can have root periods, which I say, if the roots are exposed as a result of deep valley recession, we can have periods on the roof, like something like this. You realize that this is a gingival, it has receded. Now the, the roots are exposed. So you can have a gingival, sorry, the root carries. Okay, this has like this also. Now I'm talking about secondary carries, whereby you have a failing, then a cavity has, a carries has developed under the failing, which I showed you here. Yes. Exactly, they are all intact, but based on the site. And Fisher, that's where they take them, Fisher, uh, periods, depending on the site. Or in the map periods or the entire period. So I thought about this secondary or repair periods, whereby the periods, we fill in, we have a film, but the country has developed under it. Okay. Rampant case is really for children who feed, use the feeding bottle. When they finish eating, they don't watch them and they sleep with it and they have to just come out. Okay. So this is how a rampant case looks like. Especially all the upper teeth are, are affected. The lower teeth are usually spared for the fact that the saliva flow is usually at the lower part. So it back the lower teeth and washes them away. As opposed to the upper thing. Usually the upper thing that's like the brand of so feeding bottle uh, habits. For those who sleep with their feeding bottle children. Okay. Now, rest of the period, which I said, if the person has changed his um, behavior, stop eating coffee, now using uh, fried toothpaste and all those things, then the periods become arrested, they can stay at that level. For a long time, there will be no pain, nothing, but it stays there for a long time. So then it becomes an arrested pain. Yeah. Yeah, they are not sugary, they, they, they have sweetness, <laughs> but it's not sugar. But that's why they add the fluoride to it. Like I said, the fluoride gives the protective uh, advantage because it replaces the hydrogen group and makes it a fluoro. Appetite, which is stronger than the hydrosis appetite. I don't understand what you might carry like that. Then, so that's a brushing technique that rather can develop survival, call it survival bridge. So brushing like a hard focus can destroy it as well. We call it the bicarbonate. Oh, you can do it, you can do it. So, but either, the best might not be aware if the has changed because it has changed his habits. He now brushes twice a day, he stopped eating the sweet. He might not have been the sensitivity as well. But the case can stay the in that state. Yes, so it can be the the sensitivity as well. So the case can stay in that state. Well, not unless one day just come for routine checkup, and we take an issue with we see this, then we can intervene and then go. That is what I'm saying. So the person might not even know that he has skills. So we might not need any to respond. But the remineralization can tip the skill back to the formation of mineralized tissue. But sometimes you can restore, but it might not be necessary. But we don't know whether it will continue or not. So, as they say, prevention is better. So, we can prevent it by um, telling it or just ask the person to continue this good habit. Okay. We see that case, I've talked about it again. In doing the escape, you just have to clean the cavity, remove all the debris from it. And if you're not able to remove them, then what is left there becomes a residual. Then you put your normal feeling on it, but the process can still be going on. That's what it is. So residual kills. Now the sequence of the entire kills. If you have a cavity and nothing is done about it, eventually progresses down to 
to the poor, that is when you begin to have the proprietors. Proprietors people still wouldn't come in here. What they do is they put all sorts of things in their thing. Some go to the extent of putting car battery water. That's it. They put in the cotton and they push it down there. There's an initial shopping. And that is the end. What happens? Because the name will be destroyed. Once they are asked to destroy the name, there will be no pain. And they think they are free. But the infection will be going on. The infection will be going on. And one day you wake up with a big swell on your face. Even at that time, people will still say, this one, it is not a hospital sickness, so it is a non don't, don't take it to hospital, put some herbal thing on it. And they put the herbal thing on it, then the thing will still begin to swell. You realize that they get to a point where they cannot even swallow. They will go to a state called the Lourdes and China. Even at that state, people will still not come. And sometimes the skin is lifted off the blood supply and the whole skin becomes the process. They have the tobacco, the brutalism, and the shite. So basically that is what we eventually lead to if you don't take care of those carrots. That's the secret of, of dental carrots. From dental carrots can lead to capitation, pulpitis, which can be reversible or irreversible. I said the irreversible one, if if you remove the stimulant, the pain will still be there. And at that stage, you have to see as either to remove it or do what we call root canal treatment to restore it. So basically, that is all about dental care. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. So, so this is the 
cases we learned from them ago. Rapid expansion and uh, That one we always advise, don't you? <laughs> because it will break your teeth. <laughs> so they, they are not actual periods, it's just a fracture. So they, they are the different classification. <laughs> so fractures of the teeth are not necessarily periods. You can have a fight and somebody blow you and you had your tooth fracture, you cannot say that it's scary. Okay. Yes. Yes, it, 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 it's, it's, in a way, it, it's accepting most of them. So prevent the bacteria colonizing the applied chemical. It's okay, but some of them, especially, I don't want to mention them to stop people. We have a lot, a lot of alcohol in it. It may have its own effect as well. So those who have high alcohol, when you put it in your mouth, it burns. Make sure you dilute it before you use it. Yes, yeah, any other? Tea and coffee on the tea. It's tasty. It usually makes it darker, but it, 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 it colors the plaque. So the plaque now becomes dark. Yes, and smoke as well. The pros, I mean, it's from this discussion, you realize that the plug is something that will, if it stays on your tooth for a longer time, it might end up developing cavities. So, I don't think there is any disadvantage in removing that. Okay, so that's why we have a case that you brush your teeth twice a day. Because within 12 to 24 hours, the acquired follicle is colonized by bacteria. And that becomes dangerous for you. Brushing, that we usually recommend the medium bristle patch. The hard one will destroy the teeth. But the medium bristle, I'm fine. But for the toothpaste, anyone, if you check the right content, it's more than 1,250 1, over. It's okay. Some of those about 2,000 pounds. Okay. Usually, we say you, you brush your teeth from the, from the teeth, from the gum to the teeth. Okay, so the upper one, you point the bright or the bristles upward. Then you break it down. Okay, so it will be from the gum sort of area towards it. So you brush it that way. So the normal band, it will be also from the gum. So you point it down. This is the outer surface. Now, remember that you have a tree in this as well. Right, your teeth come together. Right now, it will get more back and forth. They remember that. Different. There's 
one which with just a, a, a small plastic stick around. That one is dead. Other than that, if you have any meat, you should make it out. Two picking, if you use it right, I don't know, you might traumatize your guns. You might get infected and have some invitis or preventive later. You can use it if once in a while you are inconvenient to fight, but meat will help for the don't traumatize your Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm a Mangoes don't have a lot of alcohol in them. Yeah, and water mix. Those ones are good. But that poor one, as we come to the next session, we'll talk about the effect of alcohol in the oral cavity, leading to oral cancer. So, as much as possible, avoid it at all costs. Yeah, somebody, somebody, yes. Is it not too long? No, 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 no problem. I mean, if you do it, that's fine. But from from scientific uh, evidence base, realize that within 12 to 24 hours, the plant will accumulate. The bacteria will, will colonize those protonation. Let them be Potential substance. So, within that interval, if you're able to brush them off, then you will be free from developing. Yeah. Yeah. And the carbines ones normally would disturb the normal flora, some of which have protective. So, it's better to use maybe salt water. There's no more water or water with just some salt. Mm -hmm. So, so like, the that's why the alcohol based on which I would go, but they have one which is just water based. But they have chloride in it to go down there. And so those ones, I, I, I'll go for it. Warm water and salt is so good, especially when we pick out food. Because the warmness gives a soothing effect. Again, it causes a little bit of vasodilatation of the capillaries, which will enhance blood flow to the area to help with the healing process because they send all the nutrients and all the things that will help with the, with the healing. Then the salt in it, the dilution is such a way that you create a hypertonic solution around the site to the bacteria, hypertonic solution to the bacteria content. So then it draws out water from the bacteria into the end area. So it acts as a bacteriostatic um, effect in a way. The bacteria will not continue to produce. Okay, so that, that's why we are okay for it. Okay. Yes. Yes. No. Um, the content of calcium, the content of the fluorine, uh, the fluoride it makes the tooth stronger. So People may have their opinion, but I don't think so. I don't think so. But once you have your bright drinks, related water bright with this, that will be fine. Yeah, it's any other one. So I, I learned that uh, the bacteria multiplication happens mostly in the night. Mm -hmm. Because most of the organisms are enemies. And when you sleep uh, with your mouth closed, no. So that, that's what we, we said initially. The initial what the steps are what we call nine effects. So with time, the, we can create an anaerobic environment, then the anaerobes will, 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 will come in. Because the more the plaque accumulates, if you don't brush them, then you create more anaerobic environment for the anaerobic organism also to inhabit the plaque. I'm not sure about I mean, the anaerobes are usually when they get infection from this abscess is very difficult to eradicate it. And sometimes you might not be able to culture them as well. So you might be thinking it's a, a gram positive organism you are managing then there's an enrol somewhere. You send the culture and they say no good. So usually we we'll add metronidazole to our medication because sometimes they are really implicated and they stop as a form of an empirical medication.
I quite remember when we were doing the, uh, we used to use this plantain, this thing in the charcoal. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we thought it was good, but you know, um, it creates a lot of friction, or it has a lot of abrasive material. So it, it can easily wear your teeth out, exposing the, the tainting for sensitivity and eventually leading to a uh, caries formation. It will wipe your teeth, but in a way, it wears it off. If you see somebody who chews a lot of bones, if you open his mouth or her mouth, you realize that all the, the teeth is just flat. The grooves and the vicious are all lost. The same way, if you use that in a lot, I've seen somebody who, who, who have done that and the, 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 the teeth are just worn of all the ridges have, have disappeared. Yeah, so, <coughs> the world not true, Daddy. <laughs> But if you wear a hole in the belt, you will. It depends. Somebody with uh, a chip on their body. And you tell them to 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 in organic uh, issues. So within there, that's no Yeah. So the one is a little bit of brush it before you eat and to eat before the oh, Yeah, it's some people are talking about all this. But they day, day, because if you finish eating all your sweet and then you'll be on your feet and all those. So people say, well, you can eat and only finish you brush it off. Or you can brush, eat and wash your mouth, right? You brush your teeth, okay? You eat and you rinse. You don't have to. I think I'll go for that one. <laughs> Sugar content. So you have no problem. Uh, but you stay with your teeth and you don't have to. So there, so there. They are sugar, yeah, they are, they are, they are sugar free cup. But the more you chew food, mentally you develop DNA. And that's one of the difficult things to manage. As soon as you see the patient, you want to hide. <laughs> because they, this is not again. This is not again. Because you try all the things. <laughs> So you, you, you exercise the tongue for a long time, and the, the, the joint, and you might have that problem. So you, you control that muscle. It may help if you wash it away, but with time, but the sugar substance has stay on it for a long time. But if you rinse it, and you chew, but like I said, if you chew it for a long time, you also develop another kidney issue, which I say it is very difficult to manage. Okay, thank you very much. You have a little bit. Next one, preventive dentistry. A simple outline. Now, dentistry itself is a right of medicine, which consists of studying 
diagnosis and prevention and treatment of diseases, disorders, and conditions of the oral cavity. Usually, we, we talk about the, the, the heart tissue or the teeth or the dentition, which sometimes when you talk of dentistry, the whole person's idea comes to the teeth. But other surrounding tissues also form part of dentistry. So then we have different branches in dentistry. And for me, my specialty is the mastopatia, where we deal with oral cancers, trauma of the orofacial region, as well as severe infections. So all these things form part of dentistry, different from branches. So in dentistry, we're not just dealing with the teeth, other issues are related. So in preventive dentistry, it's an aspect which involves the arts and the science of promoting oral health and prevention of dental or facial diseases. So we know these diseases okay. We know the reason why they're okay. So we try to educate people. We try to do certain preventive procedures so that those diseases don't okay. Now, you have been educated that if you eat any sweet, then what do you do? You wash your mouth or you brush. This is a very good education. You didn't know it before. So it's a form of preventive medicine, which is just the additional one by education. Okay, so you go to the mass media. When you finish eating, make sure you brush your teeth or wash your mouth at least. Don't have a lot of sweet snack in between your meals. If anything at all, add your snack to your meals. The once you finish eating, take your snack, with Z and you wash your mouth. It's a very useful information. So basically, the knowledge you have acquired as a result of how diseases occur and they progress is what preventing them to see them set to use prevent the formation of diseases or the progression or the spread of the condition. So basically that is all. So preventive dentistry will cut across all the aspects of dentistry. All the aspects of the dentistry. Or branches in dentistry. Now they say the mouth is a gateway to the body. When I say gateway, you move my digest passing through the mouth. Your mind goes straight to lunch, <laughs> ready to swallow. Is it the bank or the food? When we say gateway, that does not mean just the side whereby you pass your food into the, into the body, but you realize that certain disease conditions can have their oral manifestation. And sometimes, we pick up some of these conditions and repair into the decisions. Because there is that trauma link between some oral conditions and systemic conditions. So that's what we mean by the gateway. It connects to the digestive system as well as the respiratory system. So sometimes you are eating, we ask you not to talk because but you use the two ways at the same time, you can choke. Okay. So as we are eating, it's better not to talk because you open the, the tracky and the food can get you. And that can cause serious complications. Now the structures, yeah. The teeth for chewing, for swallowing, for speech, for breathing, and all those things. The teeth are so essential. I'm sure if you depend on your profession, I mean, it, it, it takes away your, your confidence if all your teeth are missing. You can't even smile broadly. So when others start smiling broadly, you So it is self as a very important practice. So we need to take care of them. It gives our identity also for our being. So, it's simply defined as action taken prior to onset of disease, which removes the possibility that a disease will occur. Okay. So,
So we take an action. It could be a lifestyle modification, or it could be an intervention, which I said in on by using facial cinema to seal those cutters in the teeth. In so doing, those teeth are not likely to develop cavities. So an action that will take ground to the formation of the disease, or to prevent even the disease from progressing, or committing or caring. So that is just a simple definition. Again, the history of it, in the 19th century, people used home means remedies to, to, to manage their disease condition. Then in the 20th century, they discovered certain factors that causes diseases. And with that knowledge, they were able to advocate for the prevention of certain diseases. In the first decade of the 20th century, the issue of hygiene became so important because they realized that bacteria is a major cause of a lot of disease conditions. Then in Ghana, it used to be the town council people. And you, in some and some, I don't know how many of you remember. And you call it the town council. The, the part. It's supposed to be the town council, but we just need town council. <laughs> so they will come to your house, make sure your, your pain is, I mean, exactly. So hygiene became a big issue in those areas. The fifth and the fourth decade. Then fluoride was also identified that it helped protect the tooth. So then, fluoridation of our waters, of our toothpaste, and all those things also came in. In the sixth and seventh decade, so we have the fluoride toothpaste, fluoride mouthwash, rinse, and all those things. Fluoride vanish. Yeah. It's like just like a wood vanish. Fluoride vanish just based on your teeth. Immediately. If there's any sensitivity, can it be stop the sensitivity almost immediately? Exactly. Because it just apply, it, it dries up and it blocks those small small things. So all these have been used. And then the pit and vicious seal language, I showed you the picture of somebody with grooves and they, they, they seal it with the the, the seal. Now the objective is to avoid or initiation of a disease progress, process. So you, you prevent or you affect the initiation of the disease process itself. So the disease does not start before. Or they interrupt the progression of the disease. You have a appearance. If you don't do anything about it, it will progress, become put to the poor, leading for pipes. But once you see it, if you intervene by doing that then the disease will not progress. Or Spread of the infection. Like I said, again, if you don't do anything about the caries, it gets into the pore, the popitis, the dental abscess, ludus angina, the disease will be spread. And ludus angina can kill by all for these patients. Okay. So, to prevent the spread of the condition, again, to prevent complications that may arise as a result of that condition. And sometimes we couldn't do all this thing. The disease took it toll on the person. The person lost his or her tooth. What do you do? Rehab the teeth. Then you can do replacement for them, to at least to lessen the burden of the disability. So we have rehabilitation also as part of it. Like I said, now we know the factors that causes on this condition. So based on these factors, or this knowledge, we can do certain preventive measures. Factors predisposing to disease, we know of the plan. Causing cavities or caries. The plaque can also cause gingival diseases or the divinities of your antennas. So if you don't remove them for a long time, you brush your teeth, you realize they begin to clean. Don't brush your teeth two days and brush and see what happens. You realize immediately you begin to clean. And okay. so, black can cause caries, can cause gingival disease as well. So, knowing all this, you put an intervention. Again, the patient post resistance is also helpful. Those who are immune compromised, for the time the disease progression is a bit faster than the others. 
Complication, once you lose a tool, the teeth that are adjacent to it, they will drift into the space. Okay, so you can do something to prevent the drift by doing the restoration or using the prosthesis there to prevent the drift. Like I said, the rehabilitation is what eventually once you lose the tooth, you need to replace it. And the use of hygiene, oral, hygiene instruction, techniques of brushing your teeth, it will all help us to minimize the disease cause. We have four levels of the primordial one, which we talk about it, we just by education. Then the primary, secondary, primary, secondary, the tertiary. So this one basically is to educate people to change their lifestyle. Education to change their lifestyle. Sorry. So based on based on our knowledge of some of the diseases that they are caused. We can educate people, like I've said earlier, in brush twice a day. If you eat snack, wash your mouth at least. It will reduce the sugar content of it. Now, for children, certain harmful lifestyles, some of them suck their back. And eventually, it will lead to improving of their upper teeth or a gap in their, in their teeth. For them open back. So by talking to them, advising them, encouraging them, eventually they will stop with this bad lifestyle. So basically the primordial one if educate people to change their way of living. Okay. So basically mass media education to prevent some of these disease condition. Now the primary prevention actually taking proud to the onset the disease, which removes the possibility that the disease will appear. I've given an example already. Those with deep fishes, you can put a fish in that thing, and it's, it reduces the likelihood that the disease will come to the fall. Okay? So the disease has not appeared. Yet, we are doing a preventive measure so that we don't have a coming. The wisdom teeth, sometimes they are not able to come out. We call them impacted wisdom teeth. And depending on the angulation, they exert a lot of pressure on the teeth in front of it. So it creates a bit of pressure and also space in between them. Where you cannot brush, put particle ice in there. Bacteria act on it, and eventually will lead to development of caries in the teeth in front. So you have a wisdom tooth, there's another tooth in front of it. You can prophylactically remove the wisdom tooth in order to save the, the last of one tooth. Other than that, once it gets into a point whereby it is for pipes, you must lose tooth. The wisdom tooth is not anything that you have to remove. And now the tooth in front of it must also go. So prophylactically, you can take off the wisdom so that you will save the sum. So basically, it's a pre-pathological phase of prevention. Again, we talk about topical application of chloride, chloride rings, and all those things comes in here. Now, WHO also simplifies it this way. Like the primary one becomes a mass strategy targeted at everybody, educate everybody about this condition and how you can prevent it. Now remember when we heard Ebola was coming to Ghana. Now we don't shake any longer. You see your friend, you don't you can't shake the best. You have a knowledge about the mode of spread. Okay, so this lifestyle modification can help prevent the formation or possession of the condition. We thank God it never came here. Okay. Now, again, we have 
the high risk strategy, whereby you identify those who are high risk of developing the condition. Then you intervene. Now there is a high association with people with diabetes and gum diseases. There is a high association with people with diabetes and gum diseases. So such a people you can advocate for them to have a routine gingival checkup, whereby we do cleaning and polishing for them. Because gingival problem or gingivitis, which is the initial inflammation of the gingival, can progress to cause periodontitis. Periodontitis then affect all the supporting factors of the teeth. So eventually you lose the ligament that are holding the teeth in place and the tooth become shaky. So you have people who have not had cavity yet, their teeth were shaky. And this happened to most of our grandparents because they were not brushing effectively. They get a choose point, they get, get brushing them on one side below. Like the way I thought that you have to write the inside and all those things. They didn't have that knowledge. So most of our grandmothers or grandfathers lost their teeth. So there was this idea that if your mother takes care of you to grow your teeth, you should also take care of her so she loses all her teeth. You're, you don't have to lose your teeth. Teeth are for life. Teeth are for life. I had a patient who was almost 89, was 89, 89. He had all this time because he was always on the regular job. So you can have all your teeth for life. Yes. Okay. So now you, you, you know the you know the information. So you apply the information. You can have your teeth for life. Okay. Selected groups, those who are high risk again, those with xerostomia, dryness of the mouth. And I said those who have undergone with the territory of the head and neck region, they usually will have dryness. So they are also prone to developing cables. Then you intervene by letting them have employed rings, have artificial saliva in their mouth to put their mouth. So these are some of the things you can do for sex selected groups who are high risk of developing certain conditions. Now the secondary prevention we'll talk about. Now, the disease has already okay. Now, we prevent its complications. We prevent its complications. Then, in this case, all type of feelings will then come. Talking about the feeling, we just prevent the disease from progressing into other forms. Yet you can have a government-sponsored program whereby you go do a screening and all those with cavities, you do failure for them to apply. Your liver has been doing that on oral health day whereby we have a lot of oral talks and sometimes do free screening and those who need failure to refer them what we can do. When you go with the van, you can do the feeling for them to apply. Now the tertiary one which I said about the disease has taken its toll. We have lost your toll. But to make the burden of the deformity a bit less, we can do the replacement of teeth. We have several types. Types. You can have the dentures, which you fix it there, you take it yourself. Usually when you're going to sleep, the advisor you take it off. You can have the bridge whereby you join it to the adjacent teeth that are strong. So you don't remove them at all. Then the old way we call the implant. The implant, what it does is that it made up of titanium, which is one of the inert metals. And you fix that into the bone, and within three months, it gets so united with the, with, with the bone that you don't even feel anything. It becomes part of you. So once the implant is there, then you can then mount an artificial implant. And that becomes one of the, the best ways of replacing a missing thing. 
and that is very expensive. The original impact that came to the system, the branding map one, if you do one, is two thousand pounds. Pounds, man. Pounds, man. Man, we are shocked there. Pounds, man. For implant, a titanium implant, which the original branding map treatment, they, they develop it for the first time. And he, 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 he developed it by cancer. He was looking under the microscope and he, and, and he left the microscope like a bone slide. And the following day, so when he came by, I realized that he wouldn't be able to remove the, the, the microscope and the, the metal from, from the, on the bone. And that's how he went to that and realized that they cannot combine well with bone. So it was by accidental finding. Yes, when they put it in your teeth. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So that is what the whole cost. <laughs> so the whole cost. So now that after 20 years, you know you lose your how do you call the right. So other people can come with different types. So there are other generic ones which are less expensive. But you cannot guarantee uh, it's not being paid. But the branding man have almost 100 percent success. But the others, they might fail. They might fail in the sense that they might not be able to find well with the two. So you put the implant there, it will be loose forever. You have to take it off. Again, health promotion, which we talk about, just you know the information, you organize, mass media, political, grants, and all those, you can use all those things to spread the information. Like I said, health education, environmental modification, nutritional intervention, and behavior and lifestyle changes. So all this, in a nutshell, is what we are talking about. Education, you know the education, how the disease forms, so we intervene by that. You train them or modify the environment, the rural environment. You know that taking sweets will cause the acid in the mouth to drop. Or to, to that, that, uh, the pH drop, and that will lead to the formation of okay. So, as soon as you eat, you modify the environment by washing or brushing, then you can have a normal pH in your mouth, which will not lead to the cavity formation. Then we have intervention, nutritional intervention, certain nutrients can help us. Then, behavior changes, what we talk about. So, this is also a summary of. Now we can go to solve the disease condition and the various mode of prevention. Again, data carries as usual. We know all this information. That bacteria is one of the core, which colonize that proteinaceous tissue, substance in our teeth, to form the plaque. Do you know? If you don't do anything about it, eventually cavity or caries will form. If you don't do anything about it, Caries eventually becomes cavitated, then it gets into the pulp, toothache, and all those things. You know all those information. So, based on that, you can educate people about their oral mouth, how to brush, the use of sugars, minimal, or at least combine it with your diet. So, the money finish, you, 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 you brush. Now, the feeding bottle for children, stop. But it's dead, leave it there to sleep with it. You need to advise them. Now, sticky food has higher potential of causing cavities. Okay, the initial study of caries development was in a town called Bicoles. What they did was they used a psychiatric patient and they divided them into two. One group they fed them with sticky food, chickens, and another. They did not eat them those things. And they realized that those who were eating those sticky carbohydrates, basically all of them developed papers. That's how they, they realized that carbohydrate with fine one especially plays a one role in the development of the virus. Fizzy drinks are one of the ways of pending. So as soon as you take them, immediately wash your mouth. You can even feel it. As soon as you drink the mineral folks right now. You realize that your teeth begin to feel 
Then you may be in this motion. Yes, so this is a table to sum up preventive methods in uh, preventing pills. So the primary ones by education, the intervention by doing the all sorts of the feelings, and sometimes we have what we call root canal. Now when the cavity gets into the pore, if you do a normal feeling, the person will go through excruciating pain even before, worse than what the person came with. The reason being that when the bacteria are digesting some of those, they produce byproducts of gas as well. Now the gas can easily escape if you don't have any filling covering it. But if you have filled it and you are exerting and um, generating gas issues, uh, sometimes from the from the byproduct, nowhere to escape. So it takes a lot of pressure on the net engines, and that creates a lot of things. So once the cavity gets into the pore, you don't have to do a filling. A normal filling will cause more pain. So what then do we do? We need to remove all the debris right into the pool. Get all the debris out and have a way of doing it. That's what we call the root canal cleaning. And once you have the root canal clean thoroughly, we get that with hypochloride um, and all those solutions to eliminate the bacteria as much as possible. Then we have a sealant that we use to seal all the way to the root. Then we do a normal thing. Now, once you treat a tube that way, it becomes so brittle. It can easily break. So then we put an artificial cap on it, what we call a crown. They usually made up of dental gold and a porcelain, which is a little bit quiet. We have different shades. So usually we match the shade of your teeth to select the one to use. When we send it to the lab, we will fabricate it. We we'll just put it from there. So the course, um, well, that one is uh, manageable. What that is there? Uh, a crown it costs about eight hundred kind of to a thousand. Yeah, manageable. <laughs> so then, eventually, once you lose the two, you can do all those things for you. And then child, and all those. Things. So this is what about. So that's a root canal therapy. So this is the crown I'm talking about. So you have to fix it. So before you fix the crown, you need to shape the tooth in a certain way. Take an impression or measurement of it, send it to the lab, and they will fabricate this. And you, 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 you just fix it from it. You cement it. You have a cement, a certain cement you use to cement it from it. These are gold inlets cavities and just you take a measure, you send it to the lab, they fabricate this wood in this and just cement them inside the feet as well. And this is what we call the dentures, the normal dentures, which you fix it and you bring it out when you are going to sleep. We always advise that you take it out when you are sleeping because sometimes you are sleeping and you are dreaming that tell you are the party be the end tell you. <laughs> you are cheese on me before I realize you are <laughs> it happens usually ENT. If it gets into blood and ENT, people will come in and or cardiothoracic perforate the osophagus and all those things. But if it gets into the stomach, sometimes you will be lucky that it will come out from the other way. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah, it is possible. It's possible. So, and, but we usually make sure to have a way of preparing the 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 the, the, the before we take the measurement. So there are certain uh, measures you need to take so that you don't allow those spaces. Uh, once you do it nicely, you cement the cavity for years. Oh, 
I must say I have one and I've had it since 1994. Okay, so it depends. So like I said, he may what happened? Did it come up or it broke? So you might know how you should use it. <laughs> so if you know you have that you can fight the stinger, you take it to the left side or Simply means the relationship of your upper 
active in your lower thing when you are dressed. As we are sitting down, at ease like that, the way your teeth, the upper teeth and the lower teeth are moving together. That is what we call the oblution. And a normal oblution, or the class, not oblution, we realize that the upper teeth is slightly ahead and below, or uh, overlapping the lower teeth. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The upper teeth just overlaps the lower teeth slightly and projects out just to about um, maximum four millimeters or even three millimeters. But we have people whereby the upper teeth are far ahead of the lower teeth. And so <laughs> <laughs> so we call them class two model fish. Then we have people who have the reverse. The lower teeth are right there. Upper teeth. Upper teeth. Upper teeth. And they are called the class three model fish. I was just, I don't know what it is now, comedian in America. He used to always laugh about himself, but up for him, not this class three. Jay Leno, yeah, Jay Leno. That's the class three. So that is for Krishna, what you mean. So abnormal arrangement of it, as opposed to what you know, for more appreciation. Class one, when by apart slightly overlaps the lower teeth. The normal that is what we call the class one oblution. Others are more oblution. See? The two and the three. Okay. So, you see, there's a thing coming together. The blue, the blue, the blue, the So with this, we have certain knowledge that it could be congenital. Okay, that one we might not be able to do much about it. But other habits, which I said earlier on that, Children who suck their tongue eventually they develop small of these small oblution, class two small okay, So we advise them not to. Or we have certain intervention, which will be the secondary way of managing them. We advise them, or we put something around their tongue, or around their feet, where as soon as they take their tongue, they go prick them. Okay. And so these are certain devices that can be done to prevent them. <laughs> and sometimes they apply bitter medicine around their tongue. And even with that one, when they can suck the medicine and train it and lick the medicine away, then they will start to suck. Then we have a way of using this palace uh, applied there. Some they, they, they put their hands in the, in the straight um, cardboard so they cannot bend their have to bring it to their mouth like that. So he says, hey, okay, so, okay. So when they are sitting, you can put them in that so they cannot bring their mouth. So that can also be used. So all these things can be used to, to prevent that the secondary method. But once it has gone and they didn't keep all this advice and the disease has okay, then you can use orthodontic appliances to correct the mode of pollution. And this is another area where it will cost a lot. Okay. And the average so this is one for more of which whereby the individual things are in, in different arrangement. Okay. Okay. So this is like a class three of which like what I was talking about. The lower teeth are what in front of the upper teeth. So this is a normal what we call the class one. So using these brackets, 
we can be agreeing with them. And this is what we call the orthodontic treatment. And average it can cost about a pound, 10,000 Ghana cities to do this. The braces there. And usually, sometimes the children, as a result of peer pressure, as soon as you see their friends, they look at that, they also want to be. <laughs> 10,000 Ghana cities. Only. 10,000. So, no, insurance doesn't cover this one. This one can take about a year to about two years to get this arrangement done. There are modern types of other other type called the uh, they, 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 they are not like white like that. They are plastic sort of, and they have series of them, and they have a way of. If you put it on, you nobody would know that you are putting on braces. But gradually, they are able to shift it to where they want it to be. Okay, but those ones are very expensive. And adults who have more location, who are well to do, can go for those in this line. Um, the last time I checked was 5,000 euros. Yes. Because it's fabricated outside. So you take the person measurement, then you send it out. What they do is the original set of teeth, the original how your teeth look like, and how you want it to. B. So they have a, a series of progression that applies that you need to wear. After every one month, you have to wear this one. After another month, you wear eventually to get to the, the, the desired stage of, of, of the of the teeth you want. Okay. So these are the appliances we need in the tertiary way to correct the mold of pushing. Now oral cancers. This is where my specialty comes in, and we've come to realize that. When you talk about oral cancer, about 90% we're talking about squamous cell carcinoma. You have other forms of carcinomas and sarcomas. But general term, if you say oral cancer, everybody's mind might go into squamous cell carcinoma. But you have some sarcomas and adenocarcinomas and all those things also can happen in the oral cavity. Okay. Then one of the predisposing factor, the risk factors in developing oral cancer is smoking or tobacco in all its form, either by smoking it or by chewing it. All its forms, it has a carcinogenic substance in the which once you use it, you will prone in developing oral cancers. Now there is this synergistic relationship between smoking and alcohol. So if you do this together, then it increases your chance of developing oral cancer. If you smoke alone, and somebody who smokes and drinks, the one who smokes and drinks has a high chance of developing oral cancer. Because the alcohol then acts as a solvent for the carcinogen thing, substance in the nicotine to get into the tissue. And so there's that synergistic relationship between alcohol and smoking. Certain radiation, there's this thing in, 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 in the India. They call it quick. It, it's, yes, without pain. It's also highly carcinogenic. But it's so addictive that they, they, they can't do that. So once again, knowing this information, we advise people on lifestyle, smoking, alcohol. Sometimes it's difficult, it's addictive. But if you make an effort, all things are possible. Okay. So that is about oral cancers. But once the condition has started, initially it started with an ulcer. When you see an ulcer in the mouth that has lasted for more than two weeks, please don't continue to give the person antibiotics. An ulcer in the mouth, more than two weeks, don't continue prescribing antibiotics and vitamin C. Yes, people are helping. Exactly. Please prefer as soon as possible. So once we see this. We bounce it. 
again, there are certain three malignant lesions. I'm sure Professor Nante talked about it. Exactly. Once you see some of these three malignant lesions, lightning, planos, uh, leukoplakia, leukoplakia, then raise a high risk of suspicion, you repair this patient as soon as possible. So we do a wide local excision. If it is small, just wide local excision. That could be the only treatment in a, 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 a small lesion like that. As long as you, you excise it, that is all. You might not need to have a radiotherapy or chemotherapy in addition. So surgery for stage one conditions, that is all. But if the day is not coming, the disease has progressed, have some leaf nodes and all those things. Stage three is we can do resection and reconstruction. Sometimes it gets to stage four and realize that this one, if you want to go and do stage, you have to put the patient's whole head. So then we do palliative care. But my sister has been helping us a lot with her team. So we just send them to the palliative care just to manage the pain and, and certain effects of the condition. So that is about oral surgery as well. So this is somebody with a, a tumor, a seal of the, the palate or the antrum. Eventually, this one you have to reset. Okay. So this case has been open. Take out the mask. And if that, the mask was also affected, take out the mask. But then, this is a reconstruction plane. Reconstruction plane, reconstruct the jaw. Okay. All these things can happen to everybody. Okay, so when it comes to this thing, then we will do the tertiary form of prevention. So that, yeah, when you feel you get a pain, but so when the disease has broken through the skin, then we bring in the plastic stage. So they will raise some of the pitarized major plants over. So dependent. If lymph nodes are involved, they have to do lymph node dissection as well. And when you finish, we send them for radiotherapy and therapy combination. We had a patient who is still alive. He had a can cancer. If I'm not exaggerating, not less than 10 years, he's still around. But some of them, within five years, they are succumbed. But as my madam will always say, at least you have time to write their work and to just put things right. Okay. A certain man who also lived for a long time, unfortunately he did not take our advice to go into um, to have radiotherapy. He would have also lived for a long time, but even without the radiotherapy, he lived for eight years. He lived for eight years. Okay, so that is about the oral surgery aspect of our body. So in a nutshell, the role of preventive oral health is to identify and define the problem and the risk groups, advocates, and involve appropriate preventive measures. And then you evaluate the applied programs, whether what you are doing is working. And in so doing, you can continue to do those things or not. So this vicious net has been in existence for a long time because it works. It prevents people from, the children especially from developing qualities. So if you have children at the age of six, seven, eight, you can let them have these species in the And those ones are not expensive. Maybe for the whole mouth, usually the system may pay about 200 Ghana cities just to do that. As opposed to losing that too. Now I can leave this without talking about this condition. Ludus angina, which is one of the sequelae so a dental pill. This is a patient with this pink and diner, which usually present with a bilateral swelling, which also referred to as a brownie. It's like a bald hat. Swelling of the submandibular, sublingual, and submental spaces bilateral. 
If it's on one side, it is not going to be that. So it must be bilateral like this. If this station had opened up, I realized that sometimes even the tongue would be protruding out because it lifts the tongue up. Amazingly, the tongue is not what is inflated. The tissues around is what has become selectors. Again, the salivary glands are also spared in lupus and gender. And so, once we see them like this, we need to decompress. Formerly, what was killing them was respiratory embarrassment. Because this can spread further down to compress the tract, and that's what was killing them most of the time. So the initial management was that as soon as you see a little bit like China, you have to do, or you must secure the airway by doing the tracheostomy. So that was the initial treatment. Secure the airway, else you lose the patient. Then we realized that if you do the compression, that can prevent the spread of the salivitis down. So we came up with the compression, which is the same as IND. IND is incision and draining, but this one, if you do the incision, there will be no pass coming. So the proper term is decompression, to allow the tissue fluid to come out through the, the site of the incision, so that it doesn't spread further down to compromise the airway. So that's how we put our incisions in all the spaces. Okay, submandibular space, and the submental, Sub level, so this one will have to appear to the mouth. So, this is this square one, you have to make sure that it comes to the mouth to take care of the sublingual space, else you will not talk the patient mouth. But this one, it shouldn't come into the mouth, else you might damage the lingual nerve. Okay, so it gets into just after the myelohyoid, you stop. As you are going, you realize that you get to a place, a bit of resistance, then. You get an open space that's above the myelocardia, then you stop. But it shouldn't come into the mouth, else you damage the, the, the lingua nerve. Okay. And it's, it's in worldwide, it's supposed to be a rare condition. But in Ghana, in, 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 in Africa, almost every week in our clinic, we see people with lupus like that because of our beliefs that this is the tube of hope. Do send it to hospital. You have all this problem. Now, the frequency of lupus syndrome, like I said, eventually it will peel off all the skin. The skin becomes necrotic because it stops the blood flow, and this skin is all destroyed. So after the by the more, this is what came out with. At this stage, you can send to plastic port to split skin graft. They do well. But some of them still don't have money, so they have to continue daily dressing. And it will take a while, about three months, six months, and it will cover nicely. But they might end up with contractures. So have this. But we advise them to put a neck soft color. That can help. And this wound can heal. So this woman, after three months, eventually the, the, the wound healed nicely. No, we discharged her after a while, so she was having person at the nearby. And every two weeks, she would come for us. Really. So, importance of preventive dentistry to prevent dental conditions from occurring. Again, to prevent progression or worsening of the condition. And again, to manage death. Through the stages of the condition, once it gets to stability, then you rehabilitate. Like we talk about all those rehabilitation methods, replacement of the teeth and all those things. So basically, that is all about preventing dentistry. So it cuts across all aspects of dentistry and what we do to prevent those diseases from coming or once they come, to prevent them from progressing to the next stage.
To prevent this death is an important component of oral health care delivery. Therefore, it must be strengthened in the developing countries like Ghana to reduce the impact of the burden of oral diseases among individuals and the general public. Thank you very much.